What is the stupidest thing you've done while intoxicated? Fell over and broke both my feet at the same time. That was fun to explain over and over and over again. Wow are you okay? Did you get into an accident or something? No. I just got drunk and fell over. Oh so you were doing something active or crazy? No. I just got drunk and fell over. That's the kind of thing you just make up a story for. I ate a bunch of uncooked bacon and then took a shower. I puked so much that it clogged the drain. And then I felt lightheaded so I lay down in the tub. After about 10 minutes I was sitting in a bathtub full of my own vomit. Still drunk. And had to get ready to go to work in the next hour. Bad times. I woke up in a building site before. I feel asleep on the scaffolding and was woken by the rain. Confused I didn't know what I was doing so I rolled over and fell a story to the ground. It hurt. I looked up to see my shoes left neatly beside the bottom of the scaffolding. Apparently I have building site etiquette. In college, I suspect a lot of stories will start this way. I was randomly asked to bartend at a house party. This was not fancy bartending. It was just pouring shots of the cheapest possibly crap liquor into plastic shot glasses and handing them out. After a couple hours of this I got in the habit of pouring one for myself for every two or three I handed out. Fast forward three hours, and I am thoroughly s-faced. Not exceptionally so, but far enough gone that bad ideas no longer strike me as dumb. Which is why, as the party is winding down, this happens. I see a group of young probably freshmen with a bottle of cheap butt vodka, each trying to see who can drink straight from the bottle without gagging. Without any hesitation, I wander over and ask to have a go. I am drunk enough that I have no problem just chugging this near paint thinner stuff like water, and I down most of the bottle. Freshmen suitably impressed by my senior year idiocy. After that, a curtain descends in my memory. It literally looks like a screen wipe in my mind's eye. I wake up the next morning on the floor of the building, in a puddle of my own vomit, aching all over. I get up and walk a mile home, get in the shower to clean myself off, then go to sleep for like 10 hours. I wake up and walk downstairs, and all my roommates stare at me in horror. Dude, what happened? Who beat you up? I don't know what they're talking about, so I go look in a mirror. I am beat to heck. Half of my head is visibly swollen. I am covered in bruises from head to toe. It looks like I went 10 rounds with Ollie. I had just thought I was sore from sleeping on the floor and being super hungover. But no, I have had the living crap beaten out of me. Problem is, everyone I know who was at the party had either left or passed out by the time this happened. Days pass, and nobody is able to find out who beat me up, or why. Then, finally, we find someone who was present and conscious. He explained that I was beaten senseless by the very house itself. Which is to say, I was drunk enough to black out, be barely functional, and certainly incapable of thought, but not quite drunk enough not to wander around. Which is why I spent several hours falling onto things, fasciplanting into a dryer, tumbling down some stairs, and just generally beating the holy heck out of myself. I never got that drunk again. TL. DR. I got drunk and picked a fight with a house, and lost. Tried to steal one of my neighbor's monkeys. The monkeys started going ballistic as soon as we started cutting away at the wire mesh of the cage. The owner woke up from all the noise, nearly shot us before realizing that we were human beings and not some animal trying to kill his monkeys and then proceeded to call the police and stand guard over us, rifle in hand, to ensure that we did not run away. I drove my car through a DUI checkpoint, evaded the police during the ensuing chase, ditched my car in a random driveway, hopped out and ran on foot, ran to a building under construction, and hid under a giant pile of insulation until the cops quit looking for me. I then fell asleep under the insulation and woke up the next morning covered in mud and fiberglass with no phone or car. There was a time when I lived with a bunch of mates, and we were always into collecting beer trophies. That is, something to bring home, to remember the evening by. I can't give you the backstory, I don't know why or how it happened, but one morning we woke up to find that we had purloined an entire fireplace surround. Obviously having no need for a surround, we got rid of it. Weeks later, they asked pretty much this question on a local radio station. I told them we collected a fireplace. I won their phone in, the prize was a year's supply of chips. 
they delivered the chips a few weeks later. A year's supply is 360 bags. 12 boxes of 30. Unfortunately, the use by date on them was only 3 months away. I gave most of them away over the next few weeks to everyone I knew. Everyone thought I was awesome. I can't even look at that brand of chips now without it turning my stomach. TL. DR. Got drunk and became the freaking chip king. <laughs> Crawled over a fence from Austria to Czechoslovakia. Before the evil empire was dead. I'll have to dig up the pictures. A friend of mine got super ass faced and started puking. But he was just really out of it. Not really responding to anything. So we. His friends. Naturally felt it was our duty to make sure he didn't choke on his vomit in his sleep. Long story short. We devised a way to make sure he slept on his side. Without being able to move easily. The next day. He can't feel his arm. He can use his hand. Though. We all think it's funny. The day after that. Still can't feel move his arm. Not funny anymore. What happened was that by sleeping on his side all night. The weight of his body on his arm stopped the blood flow there and so. He couldn't move his arm for over a month. He went to get treatment. He had electric needles jabbed into his arm. We were told it could be years for it to heal. So in retrospect. A month isn't so bad. I guess. The kicker. It was his dream to get into the army. He was reporting to do that like a week after the booze fest. So his army dream had to be postponed 6 months. TL. DR. My friend got s faced. Couldn't move his arm for over a month. Can't join the army if you can't use your arm. 1. Threw a Georgia bottle at a cop car my second year of college. 2. Punched a cop in the face while trying to flee a bonfire party my freshman year of high school. 3. Had sex one last time for fun. Conceived child. 4. Ate all the lasagna. Couldn't crap for days. Woke up in a bathtub in another county wearing someone else's pajamas. No clue where my clothes went. The house I had woken up in showed signs of a catastrophic bender. And I didn't know anyone else there. Carefully searched for my phone and wallet among the panned out strangers and bust home in the jammies. I still have them. Peed into a plant on my college's campus with leaves that arced outward toward me acting as a funnel to put all the pee right back on me. Then I showed up at a friend's house covered in a ton of pee. I was discreetly sent home without all the women seeing what had happened. <laughs> Fell asleep on a toilet in a bar. Jerked myself awake and elbowed the back tank of the toilet. It shattered and water starts gushing out. Everyone in the bathroom starts going ooshiyayite etc. Quickly stood up and pretended to be just peeing. Explained to staff when they knocked that it was the only stall open when I had to pee and I did not cause the damage. It flooded the entire hallway. Went outside and made myself throw up. Used my sweatshirt to wipe my face. Threw it in someone's front yard. Went back inside. Never told my friends what happened. I was unemployed. Doing odd jobs labbering for cash. Having a bad time. Then my motorcycle broke. Nearly caught fire. To cheer me up. My girlfriend took me out drinking. But she miscalculated my mood and we went to a wine bar. Nothing cheaper than $9 per glass. Not the kind of drunk I was going for. So I left. Went to the nearest grocery store and came back with the handle of an old crow in the trunk of the car. I proceeded to do a couple shots at a time. Going back and forth from the bar to the trunk. Managed to get good and tight thanks to this method. For less than $20. Girlfriend drives us home. I pass out on the bed. Girlfriend wakes up to the sound of running water. That was me. By the wall near the foot of the bed. Peeing on the concrete pillar. Loft apartment. Concrete floors. Exposed blah blah blah. I'm not just drunk. I'm not just sleep waking. I'm drunk sleeping. She jumps up. Pushes me toward the bathroom. I slam the doors. Don't turn on the lights. She hears the toilet flush. Then again. Minutes later. I stumble into bed. Now naked. She's sitting on the bed next to me the next morning. Waiting for me to wake up. With a crap eating grin on her face. Guess what you did last night she sing songs. I stagger into the bathroom to find the toilet near overflowed. With my boxes half lushed. Not the best way to start a very hungover day. I think asking a chick I had no chance without over text message. She never replied and never spoke to me about it. I sent her maybe 4 texts over the night. I know she got them because she texted me from the same number as before. 
It was bad. Real bad. About two years ago I was at my cousin's bat mitzvah. My other cousin had won several months before that. At that one, my brother got extremely hammered. So much so that he was throwing up in the parking lot of the temple crying in my grandmother's arms that he wants everything to be okay he is 24. So when I go to my first cousin's bat mitzvah, the whole family is telling me don't you dare get as messed up as Brandon did. I'm like okay okay. Well, 9 vodka cranberries and 4 bowls later, safe to say I am beyond fricked up. So my grandparents end up driving me and my brother back to the train station. Bit on the way, I have that very first moment of internal swelling. You know, that moment in your drinking when your body goes hey remember how fun throwing up is? We should do that now it'll be cool. So I say to my grandparents yeah guys, yeah you got about 10 solid second before I start vomiting everywhere. So my grandparents pull over and I jump out to start puking in the middle of a 4 lane highway. 4 lanes all going same direction. Mid puke. I am directing oncoming traffic going 60 plus miles an hour at midnight. Head down to puke. Arm up to wave around. I get back in the car and we start driving. Then a sinking feeling. Where is my phone? Well we went back. Found it in about 400 pieces. Oh, and not to mention I was 400 miles from home and had to travel all the way back to my home state with no phone or transportation. TL. DR. Directing traffic on a four lane highway while throwing up in the middle of said highway. Egged on by a very convincing tranny. I got on stage at a gay bar and did a strip tease so I could win $100. I'm a straight male. Came in second. Second is a weird name for a tranny. Hot wired a road leveler and drove it down the road and attempted to run over a Volkswagen Beetle that had been Molotov cocktailed before I got there. One night, some friends and I came back from the bars and all stayed over at one of the guys house. Well, they put my drunk butt to sleep on the couch and the next morning I woke up in bed next to one of the guys in the group I didn't know so well. No funny business, we were both in all our clothes. So we all assume that's the strangest thing that happened in the night. As we're cooking breakfast, our host gets an email from his parents who are at church. Apparently in the night, I had gotten up from the couch, walked to the parents' bedroom, and crawled in bed with them, attempting to spoon with the dad. After they had stopped laughing, they put me back to bed with someone else. I still haven't lived this one down, and probably never will. TL. DR. I got in bed with my friend's parents after a night of drinking. I forgot to take a leak before leaving the bar one night, and my route home took me right past the local police precinct. I was halfway home and nearly pee my pants, so drunk me thought it would be satisfying and hilarious to pee on the door handles of one of the patrol cars parked on the street. I had covered three of the four handles when I hear a whoop whoop and look up to see four uniformed officers climbing out of a paddy wagon. I spent the night in jail. Once, in Mexico, I drank three quarters of a bottle of Jose Cuevo by myself. Long story short, I feel down some stairs, judo threw a bouncer, got foam aced, proceeded to wipe said foam from my face and flick it back at the bouncer, looked him dead in the eye and said, mace only makes me hornier, walked across the street and he continued partying elsewhere. I woke up in my condo's jacuzzi tub filled to my chin. About 20% of the contents of the tub was my urine. P.S. My face was burning to the point of tears the next morning. Okay, as much as this sounds fake, it's hilarious. I got so drunk at an event I was hosting, with press and everything that I was drunk on camera on one of our local channels. After that, I ended up hitting on my ex-father-in-law younger girlfriend. He saw it all BTW and hated me forever. Of course she wasn't interested. Later that night I got into a verbal fight with two cops in a gas station who then proceeded to detain me in their car in front of about a dozen of my guests. My friend had to bribe them in exchange of my freedom. Yay Mexico. The moral hangover, as we call it down here parts, was unbearable the next day. This will seem pretty tame, but in my first year of uni, I drank 3 stroke 4 s of a liter bottle of vodka, some beers and then urinated out of the first floor kitchen window. Got blacked out, 
came to and a guy was brandishing a knife at me. My best friend got me out of a sticky situation. Then I proceeded to get into a fight with my best friend. And later on smashed my glasses and cell phone into little pieces. I remember nothing other than my friend rescuing me from the guy though with knife. Physically assaulted the same police officer three separate times in the same night. Was escorted home after kicking the officer the first time. Upon arrival home. Was convinced it wasn't my house. So I took off in search of my real home. Was picked up a half mile away by the same police officer. Proceeded to elbow him in the face and run away. Only made it about 15 feet. Was wearing heels and the pavement was slippery. Before he grabbed me from behind and cuffed me. My friend and her mom showed up 2 minutes later and explained to the officer that I was foreign and just scared and told him they should let me go with them. He agreed. As he was taking off the cuffs. I elbowed him again. Smashed his freaking nose. I was unaware that I was being let go. So I tried to run away again. Slipped. Fell on my butt. Started crying. Was carried into my friend's car and taken home. I have no idea how I didn't end up in jail that night. TL. DR. I'm a violent drunk. A bunch of friends and I were on a snowboarding trip two states away in Michigan. The typical day consisted of 1. Wake up and drink to cure hangover. 2. Go snowboarding from 10 to then hit the chalet bar to cure oncoming sobriety. 3. King of the mountain. 4. Go to back to lodge for drinks. Had a trip keg outside and about 15 liters of Jameson for community use, as well as several more exotic beverages to choose from, and video games. 5. Hit the town for strip clubs and drinks, jack bombs and $2 tall boys far as the eye could see. 6. Go home. Drink. Party. Sexy time. 7. Crash and repeat the next day. On about day 5 of our trip, we were staggering home from the bars in a group around 2.30 in the morning. A guy is yelling at us across the street about something, but everyone else is ignoring him. Pausing. I take a moment to zero in on him and tune my ears to discover he wants help getting some gas. I stagger across the street to meet Gus, the 6 feet 4 inches 300 pounds dreaded out Afro-American asking for help. I'll paraphrase here, but essentially he wanted me to use my card to buy gas at the pump because the store was closed and he only had cash. He showed me the cash, so I run my card but to no avail. Meanwhile, everyone else is watching our interaction from across the street in dazed confusion, including two strippers we met, but that's a story for another time. Well Gus tells me, there's another gas station down the street, Huppin, which, without a second thought, I do. So next thing I know, I'm drunk off my butt driving down the road in a town I don't know with a man I just met and he's blasting Lady Gaga. We're both singing along. Gus ended up being super cool, and, I later discovered, from the same town as me in MN. I got him his gas and he promptly paid me back, even insisting he find a nickel to cover the total amount. The best part was when, after driving about 3 blocks, I happened to glance in the mirror to see one of my good friends. Mike, sprinting full speed after the car, he thought I was being kidnapped. I'll always look back fondly on that night as the time a gentle, gasless man named Gus helped me to discover the true meaning of friendship. I've went into a neighbor's house thinking it was mine, and made food. Eventually my friend pulled me out of there. Neighbors never knew. I've tried opening plenty of other people's doors thinking they were mine. Burned my friend's seat of her car with a cigarette and offered her three dollars for the damages. Lost all sorts of crap. Money. Cards. My entire purse. Keys. Phones. Shoes. Jackets. So much stuff. I drove to the 7-Eleven near my house once in the snow and knocked over a couple signs and one of those electrical box things in the ground. Don't know how I didn't get caught or how my car was able to just drive off without a scratch. Another time I wanted to drive to the store and when I was backing out of my spot I promptly took my driver's side mirror off with a carport pole. At that point I kinda sobered up, realized I'm beyond stupid, pulled back into my spot, went inside my house, and went to sleep. I've said so much weird crap that didn't make sense, thought people were other people, made scenes in bars, etc. I have tons of stories but don't wanna put too much effort into something that looks like it'll get buried. A friend of mine got so drunk once that on our way back to the ship, yes the navy days, 
I was playing with my phone when all of a sudden I hear why is this water so prickly I look back to see my best friend going full breaststroke in the bushes in front of a family restaurant. Oh the drinking stories. One time I drank some for loco and my mom called me the next day. Mom. Oh. Good you're okay. I was worried about you. Me. You're I'm fine. A bit tired. Mom. Did you end up kissing that girl? Me. What? No. I woke up on a couch. Mom. Do you remember talking to me? Me. Um. I was hoping that was just a dream. Mom. Yeah. You called me at like 2 in the morning. We talked for a while. I was worried because you were so drunk. Did you get home okay? Me. Oh. Yeah. I'm fine. I think Leah picked me up. I woke up on her couch. Mom. Is Leah that girl? Me. What? Mom. Ha 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 you don't remember? Me. Number. This going to be really embarrassing isn't it? Mom. You thought I was some girl you wanted to kiss ha 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 Me. What? Oh my god. My face turns bright red. Mom. Yeah? You called and thought I was this girl you really wanted to kiss. Did you end up kissing her? Me. Number. I woke up on Leah's couch. Mom. Well. You really wanted to kiss her. You thought I was her. I kept on telling you I'm your mom. But you didn't believe me. You thought I was her just playing a devilish trick on you. Me. This is the most embarrassing thing to ever happen. Mom. Yeah. You told me you and Sean were walking down railroad tracks in Detroit. And you wanted to meet and kiss and stuff. I kept telling you who you were talking to. At one point you said if this is really my mom I'm going to be in B-I-I-I-I-I-I-I trouble. Smashed approx 25 mailboxes leading back to my house. Got paranoid. Figured the best way to throw cops off the scent was by smashing my own mailbox. Result. Fricked up my mailbox. Another time drank two bottles of wines. Then drove three. One stroke two hours to my hometown having bongs the whole way to watch startled Lima or whatever the frick was funny on YouTube in 2008. The cake though, went into a casino. Somehow made my way to the commercial kitchen. Broke into their alcohol fridge. Stole three bottles of wine and as many beers as I could carry. Tried to evade authorities by stripping naked and swimming in the harbor in the pouring rain. Eventually they left me alone. Attempted to get dressed in the awning of a cafe. At 9am on a Monday morning. Got thrown down the steps by the chef. Stumbled back into my work. Which I had left 8 hours earlier. Still naked and proceeded to abuse all the staff working telling them how they just don't get the naked drunk and how it's a noble cause I was working towards. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. My friends are buttholes. A few years ago I got insanely hammered at a bar with a few of my friends. One of them had decided to bring handcuffs and proceeded to handcuff me to the stripper pole in the bar. Then, they handcuffed me to a chair taller than me so I had to drag it around everywhere I went. Finally, they get me into my car and I am so drunk that I am laying in the back seat crying because nobody will give me a cigarette and my seatbelt won't stop locking and it scares me. Two years later, I still have not lived this down. And they have pictures. I think you need new friends. There was a brawl over some people wanting to poop in my friend's ear. We were saying no freaking way. That's not very nice and we started fighting. I left and burst into the living room with a full auto act 74 and start screaming. People scatter and two or three guys tackle me. I don't recall this but my friend showed me the security tapes. I also don't know where I got the gun. Holy crap. Spring break in Florida. Free booze at the bar for happy hour. I figured I'd make the most of it and have tequila shots. Well, when I woke up in a condo with a couple guys I didn't know, luckily with my clothes on, they informed me that I had passed out in the bar. The bar security had said that someone better take care of this girl or they were going to call the cops, and my friend I had gone with was nowhere to be found. One guy was putting cold packs on my forehead, and they had a trash can next to me. They were very sweet. I was lucky that it wasn't some crazy perv that took me home. I puked for hours. Slowed me down for a day, but I recovered and enjoyed the last couple days of the trip. I ran away from a male stripper trying to give me a lap dance and wandered around the front of the house crying because not only was I distressed but I sliced my foot open on broken glass while trying to escape. I ran away from all of my friends at 4 in the morning to splash about in the sea with these stray dogs I found. 
promising them that if they cared for me then they could eat my ribs. They were my sea doggins. And that is my name. I'm a big white guy. White as can be. I was making out with this black girl who was jacked. Like the Williams sisters jacked. So we're making out. All of a sudden I just started humping her leg in front of everyone at the party. Took like 3 guys to pull me off. I felt like a rapist when they told me the next day. Kissed my best friend. Felt bad about it so ran out of the nightclub we were in. Ended up wandering through a load of fields. Fell in a ditch and split my head open. Cut my face. Broke two of my front teeth. One of which resulted in a £3,000 bill. Lost my iPhone. Driver's license. University id. Bag. Keys. Money and shoes. Ended up knocking on a random person's door at 4am and scared the crap out of her because I looked like something out of a horror movie. Covered in mud with blood running down my face. Not a great evening. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.